If you're in the process of binge watching minimalism videos, or if you've already started the process of decluttering all your stuff, this video is for you. After three years of being a minimalist and looking back to my first decluttering process, there's a lot of things that I wish I had known before I started getting rid of my stuff because there's many things that I regret decluttering, many nights that I spent overthinking the things that I should get rid of or keep, and so much guilt over the things that I still owned and that I couldn't let go of. So I'm here to share with you my experience so you don't go into the same pitfalls. Let's do this. Okay, the number one thing is to not start with a specific goal in mind, especially unrealistic goals, unrealistic expectations. So for instance, don't have a specific number in mind. This was my biggest mistake because having watched so many capsule wardrobe videos and like people in their van traveling with their backpack and owning like 50 items, I think 50 was my number. And I also had like an ideal of an aesthetic that I wanted to have and the things I wanted to be able to do. Of course, having a vision is important, but having a very specific goal that is difficult to attain, that was at the source of all of this anxiety and guilt. Because minimalism is not about a number and it looks different for everyone. I mean, we all have a different lifestyle. And because of this, there's two pitfalls that I fell into. The first is that, of course, when you start decluttering stuff, I felt such a high, like I was on a dopamine high. I felt so excited and so proud. And like the more stuff I got rid of, the more I felt this like <gasps> excitement. And also it turned into an obsession because I was overthinking all the stuff that I had to declutter. The decision making was taking a lot of space in my mind. And also I just kept wanting to declutter more and more and more for the whole duration of the quarantine. This was my goal. And because of the high that I felt, I, I feel like I just started to declutter things for the sake of decluttering. Looking back, it's very similar to just, you know, being on social media or receiving texts from people. It's like, it gives you the same dopamine. From that obsession and this high also came, as I mentioned, this guilt of not decluttering enough, not being able to hit my number. I was like, why do I need 10 underwear when some people can just have three of them and you know do laundry more often and i think it's really great that some people are able to do that like it's so admirable maybe that's why we're so attracted by by those videos of like extreme minimalist or super tiny capsule wardrobes but you have to really take a step back and realize if this is really something that would work for you because if it's starting to create a lot of anxiety and it's too difficult then in my experience it wasn't for me and maybe it's not for you either. I know that a lot of people do this, like they wear the same outfits every day, they have like a daily uniform and this idea really appealed to me and I wanted to do that. But then when I started this challenge and it's been a week now I realize I need like some diversity. I like to decide, okay, today I'm gonna wear this, tomorrow I'll wear, I'll wear this and I don't wanna have the same outfit every day. The most important is actually not to focus on the goal, but to focus on the process instead. And I don't think it should be something that you do in one week. It should be a very slow and mindful process because you have to take so many micro decisions and sometimes they're going to be big decisions, you know, and that's exhausting. It's mentally draining. It's difficult. It brings up a lot of emotions, having to let go of things that you used to love and used to use all the time. I mean, it's funny that we think about decluttering our space, but this whole decluttering process can take so much space in our mind. And also start with the easiest things. You don't have to start decluttering uh, the things that you have a really strong emotional attachment to. You can just take it slow, start little, and you know, gradually work from there. Something else is that it's okay to change your mind. So what helped for me was to put all my stuff into a box that I would just leave somewhere. And I would just take some time before donating that box because sometimes I would just change my mind. Give yourself the space and time to change your mind because it's very natural to change our minds. I mean, we're only human, so you don't have to get rid of the things that bring you joy. Let's say that I have two black sweaters that I really like and wear often, but I would tell myself, why do I need two black sweaters? So I would just get rid of something that I really love that brings me joy just because I have something else that is like an alternative and you know, can be worn in the same occasions. I wish I had taken more time and I wish I gave myself more space to not only change my mind, but also keep things that I really like.
it's really easy to compare yourself to other people, especially on YouTube because there's so many videos about minimalism. So that leads me to my next point, which is to really focus on your own journey. Minimalism looks different for everyone and we all have a different lifestyle. Like my lifestyle is so different from your lifestyle. A big part of minimalism is to really reflect on yourself and what you need and the kind of lifestyle you have. What is it that gives value to your life? Why do you want to declutter your things? Try to identify and constantly you know, remind yourself of why you're doing this. And in this way, you're really able to bring mindfulness into this process. Because in the end, that's also what minimalism is. It's, it really allows you to get to know yourself, get to know your needs and to be more in line with your inner self. And this will help you not go into an automatic decluttering mode and not decluttering for the sake of decluttering. And overall, all of this mindfulness and taking it slow and really focusing on the process, it really allows you to find your own version of minimalism, to stay true to yourself and not do things because other people are doing it. So for instance, if you, you love socks and for you it's meaningful to have 30 pairs of different socks that have different patterns, then keep your socks. If you can keep those uh, little tips in mind, I'm really sure that you'll have a much more enjoyable and relaxing decluttering process and, and journey. And hopefully you will have less regrets. I mean, minimalism is really fun and it can really change your life in the best possible way. But it's really easy to get lost in feelings of guilt and obsession and overthinking. I think now 90% of my belongings are things that I use on a very regular basis. Maybe about 5% is stuff that I don't really use so much, but I'm still waiting to see if, you know, I will use it in the future. And the other 5% is at my parents' place, so I don't really think about it. For me, minimalism has helped me with three main things. First of all, it's increased my mobility. It just makes it easier to travel. It takes me less time to pack all my stuff. It's also reduced my feelings of guilt because sometimes uh, there's a lot of stuff that I would have accumulated that I didn't use or need, and it would just make me feel really anxious. And the last benefit is that it just helps me keep my space organized, clean, and clutter-free. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. And if you have any questions or want to reflect on your experience, please feel free to share in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of it, feel free to subscribe and press a like. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!